Today, we are going to learn all about trigonometric functions. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> but not just any old trigonometric functions. We want to learn the specific values of cos and sine at 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. The five important angles, the ones that come up all the time, and it's very, very useful to know these values because they come up in all of your calculations. So if you have a nice way of remembering them and knowing them, it's really, really helpful. The way I like to think about it is considering the graph or the graphs of sine and cos. If we're going from 0 to 90, 0 degree angle to a 90 degree angle, uh, what values do cos and sine range between? It's a maximum of plus 1. Yeah. It is, yeah. So we've got a maximum of 1 up here, and the minimum is going to be... Minus 1, minus 2. Between 0 and 90. Oh, ooh. You're right, that was... Oh, Very good, yeah. you are absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> However, if we just consider not oh, to okay, right, we're just okay. thinking about triangles. Oh, right, okay, yeah, so zero. It's going to go from zero, yeah, okay. perfect. And so, uh, which one starts at zero? Sine. Sine. Sine starts at zero. And when it gets to 90, it's, at it's one. increased to one. Yeah. So sine is an increasing function. It increases all the way from zero to 90. And as we know, it's something kind of like that. Cool. Yeah. Kind of increasing wave shape. Now, if we have cos, cos at zero is one is equal to one. And then at 90, Bobby? It's a zero. Yeah. So they swap places. We've gone all the way down to zero. And it's got the same shape, but just flipped. So, something like that. Mm. We have our cos. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's worked out better than I expected. We have cos and we have sine. So let's... Remember, sine. sine, which is the increasing function, and cos is the decreasing, and cos is the one that goes down. Sure. So we have the graphs of sine and cos, and then we want to think about what are the values at 30, 45, and 60. The important angles, the ones that are really useful and helpful to know. Right. And do you remember what some of these values are? Some. Some. Yeah. some. So some. We, don't, we don't need to worry about which one's which at the moment, just because it's the same values that appear. So we've got 0 and 1 at the end points. Yeah. So we've got 0 and we've got 1. Mm -hmm. And then what other values? Can you remember which other ones pop up? Don't worry which angle is which, but like what other kind of numbers yeah. we talk about? I'm trying to do a half. <laughs> All right. So we do have a half. There is yeah. a half. Yeah. What is it? Square root of 3. There's a root 3 in there, perfect. Yeah, it's a root 3 divided by 2. Yeah. And then we have the root 2 yeah. divided by 2. Cool. Now, it's quite tricky to remember which one goes with which angle. Yeah. And the way that I like to do it is we know that they go between 0 and 1. Yeah. And then the way to remember the three numbers in between, they're all divided by 2. And what you can do is if you take the square root of 1. Which is 1. It's just 1. Yeah. But if you write it like this, you've got a nice pattern. So it's like root 1 divided by 2, root 2 divided by 2, root 3 divided by 2. And these are in order, they increase in order, this one's slightly bigger, slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we can do now is we can actually use the graph that we have here to fill in the table and get all of these values. Right, so Bobby, you can have the easy ones. The end points. End points. At zero. zero. I'm fairly confident it's zero. For which one? For you, I know. Before the sign. Zero for sign, perfect. And then for cos? We know that it's going to be one. We know that it's one. So those ones are easy to remember, and we, we've got that. We need to know the graph anyway, so we, we kind of know that. And then, as we can see on our graph, sine ends up at one, and cos goes down to zero. Okay. And now this is where the graph is super helpful. Yeah. So we know that these three values have to go one in each for the sine and one in each for cos. But you can use the shape of the graph to tell you exactly where these must go. So here, we've written them in order oh, wow. by using the, the root one, root two, two root, root three. three. Yeah. So if sine starts at zero, does it always increase? Yes. It does? Yes. So what do you think sine of 30 is going to be? Square of one over two. Exactly. That's going to be the half value. Oh, I love this. And then the next one? Square root of 2 over 2. Because it has to increase, and then it goes... Square root of 3 over 2. Exactly. 
And then what's going to happen to cars, Bobby? We're going to go the other direction. Exactly, because cars is always it's decreasing. Yes. It always has that negative slope. So cars starts at one, and then we have root three over two, and then we go root two, two over two. two. So that's the point. They cross over. Exactly. Oh, so we even, we even know where they cross. Yeah. Oh. Because we can see. Your diagram works perfectly. This is so beautiful. <laughs> and then I've never drawn a diagram that well <laughs> in my life. And then we know it goes to the half at the end. Oh. So this is how I like to remember them. The key thing is remembering it's always zero and one. Yeah. And then you've got your root one over two, root two over two, root three over two. It's like a nice pattern. Yeah. And then it's just once you know the shape of the graph, you actually know all the values. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, thank you, Tom. Can, we, well, can, can that be an additional tattoo for you? Or? What, the, the graphs? I think, I think the this, graphs, the is how, how much we, we found the, the beauty of this yeah, graph. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like that's, that's the template. That's the template. <laughs> so all, all get one done. All of them. <laughs> So I want to thank you very much for your wonderful kind of way of helping us remember trig uh, values. Bobby, it's great to be in a class with you. Always. Uh, always. Uh, and having thought about what you said regarding the different trig values, I've kind of um, remembered how we can work them out using Pythagoras' theorem. We're going to use two different kind of key triangles. I'm going to put mine down here. The first triangle we are going to look at has got... So, we, and it's a right angle, mm -hmm. and we've got, um, if these two sides are the same, what type of triangle is it? Isosceles. Isosceles. <laughs> Isosceles. Okay, and yeah. if this is 90 degrees, what are these two angles? Um, they have to be the same. They have to be so the same? They have to be 45 degrees. Fantastic, so half of the 90, Yeah. so both 45 degrees. Okay, so um, we can then work out because we know these two sides, what is the length of our um, longest side? A squared plus B squared is C squared. Wonderful. So this side here we can work out is the square root of 2. So that's kind of all the sides in the angles of need. So we can use this to derive our trig values. Okay? So now we're going to just look at sine and cosine. So based on that, do you remember what the, you, the little thing we have to remember? The little... Uh, not a rhyme, but the so. Sokoto, Sokoto, Sokoto. I remember it differently. How do you remember? I'm old school. Go on. Silly old Harry okay. caught a herring trawling over America. Oh, Silly old Harry caught, caught a herring, herring trawling, trawling over America. America. My mum taught me that. I am not. Okay. <laughs> it's that old. The big question is. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. He's silly, though, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> silly man. So, what does so represent? Uh, sine is equal to uh, sine of the angle. Sine of our angle, which we have here as uh, forty-five. Forty-five is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. And our opposite, kind of for either one of these, actually, is just going to be one over the square root of two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like you said, like you showed this earlier. And so if we think as well for cos, um, for we've got our ka, right? So again, we have cos of 45 is equal to? Um, the adjacent, so let's just pick, that's one adjacent, yeah. and the hypotenuse is going to be root two. And as what? Well, silly old Harry caught a herring. Caught a herring. So we need... There you go. See? So that's kind of, so that we worked out, like what you showed us earlier, we've kind of proven this actually like a thing. We're going to look at another triangle that helps us with our other angles, 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Yeah? So, this type of triangle that we're using to go to look at. Okay? So what type of triangle is this? Equilateral. I think that's right. Yeah. Equilateral. We've got, we've got the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got the same answer too. Three same answers. There you go. Yeah. Because all the sides are the same. If all the sides are the same, what else can you tell me about the angles? They might be the same. As and well. if they are the same, what are they? What are they? Oh, 180 divided by 3, 60. Right, so this is 60 degrees, yeah. this is 60 degrees, and this is 60 degrees, okay? Oh, I'm feeling hot now, 60 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ignore Bobby being very silly, um, but at the same time, funny. Um, so we are going to use this 
to create uh, a, a triangle that has got 30 degrees as your top angle here, and then 60 at the bottom, and then the 90 degrees angle. So we start to use Pythagoras again. Yeah. So here, I'm going to draw it out. The base of what we have, and so what this length here then is one. Okay? Yeah. So our, we've got a right angle, we've got 30 degrees as our top, we've got 60 degrees as our bottom angle, degrees, and then we have our length, our hypotenuse is one, and we've got our uh, base angle is one. And then how are we going to work out this one here? Using Pythagoras. So we've got a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Yeah. But this time we can let's say c squared minus b squared. Right, so we call this x, we're going to say that x is equal to. Is so it 2 squared? Square root of. 2 squared two minus. 2 squared. Minus 1 squared. Minus 1 squared, which is x is equal to the square root of 4, take away 1, which is 3. Okay, so this side is the square root of 3. Okay? So now, it looks very similar to a lot of the kind of values that you had, which is one to four. And so we're now going to think about putting them together. So now, let's look at our 30 degrees, okay? So if we have sine of 30, okay? So this is our sine, what's our opposite? Side. It's the one at the bottom, so it's one. One. And then our hypotenuse is? The longer side. Which is? It's the two. Two, one to four. And then if we then look at sine 60, okay, so this is our 60, so what do we have for sine 60? Our opposite is? Root 3. Root 3, okay, and then our hypotenuse is? Still the 2. Still the 2. So sine of 30 is a half, which we got, and sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2, okay? So we do the same for cos. The cos of 30, so if we have our 30 here, what is our adjacent? Uh, that's going to be the square root of 3. Okay, and our bottom news is? Still 2. 1 to 2, which is the same for all of them, remember? Thank mm -hmm. you very much. And then uh, if we do cos of 60 is equal to our opposite, or no, our adjacent of our 60, which is? One, and then I have what to use, which is two, which kind of effectively proves all the wonderful stuff that you sh showed, and it brings together the whole waves and Pythagoras. <laughs> <laughs>
Still zero. zero. Still zero. And here we've got one half over root three over two for tan of thirty, which is twos cancel one divided by root three. There we go. Yes. One tidy over man's root right there. <laughs> some tidy man. Yeah, and then here we've got root two over two divided by root two over ah, two. Ah, which is root two over two, which is one. one. We've got one there. Oh, and then good. finally we've got, well, penultimately, we have tan of 60, which is root 3 on 2, divided by 1 over 2. Cancel which is root, root 3 two. over 1, which is root 3. Root 3. This and is now, so this oh. is something's going to blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> 1 over 0. Now what is this? <laughs> is this... <laughs> <laughs> AKA infinity. <laughs> it's going to be infinity. Infinity, infinity yeah. Infinity, or we can put undefined. Oh. So these are the things that we need to be able to record.